I was up against some big competition with Alan next door, and if I wasn't in here, I'd certainly be in there. Um, I feel quite honoured to be standing here talking about branding because I'm not a brand expert by any means, but I have done quite a bit with my career prior to coming into wedding, uh, the wedding land, and so I guess some of that was a great springboard for me. So um, first of all, I'd like to sort of start off telling you what it is that I want to cover today, and that's um, basically how I created my brand. So I'm going to use my brand as a case study um, and how I've basically developed it. It's year seven for me now. Um, and we have added a shop since Nikki had her notes. Um, so, you know, we've, we've done quite a lot with it. Um, and as I said, I'm not a brand expert, and I think that's actually quite good because I'm not going to talk brand jargon with you. I'm just going to talk real how it is and exactly what I did. Um, I'll take questions as we go through, please, rather than save it all up for the end when we've lost the moment. So if there's anything you want to ask me, just put your hand up and please, we'll stop and we can talk about it. Um, the objective for me today is that everybody leaves with one golden nugget, um, and it's quite an informal, interactive session as we go through. Um, so a little bit about my background before Weddingland that might help you understand where I came from. Um, <coughs> I've worked for a number of blue chips and smaller companies like Marks and Spencers, being the bigger one, um, and right through to the smaller one being the peer where I was a commercial director. Um, I've been in store operations, sales and buying. Um, I was responsible for buying hot cross buns one year, um, but that was a £2 million budget per week, so quite a big, quite a big business. I also was in buying with ladies' lingerie, um, homeware goods. Um, and I kind of worked through the different jobs all over the UK um, and abroad, doing a variety of different positions within that company. Um, all of that, I think, exposed me, if you look at the companies that I've worked for, to a great number of um, situations with different brands that were highly successful. Um, and even a big brand like Marks and Spencers um, going down the pan effectively. I wasn't responsible for that, but I was there when it was going on and I saw, I saw the mistakes that they were making. Um, and that was, that was a great learning curve. Through to a company called The Peer, some of you may remember them. They were an amazing homeware group um, who just got left behind because they didn't understand the internet or the importance of websites and approaching their customers in, in the right way. Um, but I probably less learned more about branding in that company because of brand language and how they behaved. So it was, it was great learning for me to do that. Um, so that's a bit about my background. What I want to do is just introduce um, my company, Ellie Sanderson, my brand. Um, that's what we look like online. Um, we sell luxury wedding dresses to the discerning bride. That's what we do. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, another screenshot from our website. <coughs> and then we flex that brand into um, Ellie Sanderson Boudoir. I'm married to David Bostock, who's a wedding photographer, sitting over there. And we thought, how can we make some more money? Um, and it was something David always had wanted to do, but that we felt that branding it with a man's name was not the right thing. Um, and so we kind of developed the trust with Ellie Sanderson and thought, let's, let's bring the two companies together and see what we can come up with. And it's been phenomenally successful because girls trust me and my name and they come to my boutique to have their photography done. So there's the safety and <coughs> the fact that David's a man never really comes up in question. There's always a woman there present as well. But it's just a great example of how we flexed um, the Ellie Sanderson brand into something else. Um, so if I sort of move on and talk about where I kind of am now... Um, my brand and what it's achieved, and then I'm going to walk through how, how we got there. Um, my brand sales at the moment are in excess of a million a year and have been for the last two years. We've got three shops with one photography studio. Um, Ellie Sanderson has earned a reputation for ex excellence in, in all that we do, and we work really hard to do that and how we present ourselves to everybody that we meet. Um, Ellie Sanderson has now got 12 national awards, um, from website awards through to shop standards through to um, Best Bridal Boutique. Um, I'm a judge with the Wedding Industry Awards as well. Um, and I write for, uh, I have written for a couple of trade magazines and still write for one. Um, ES is the top retail account for Sassy Holford and Suzanne Neville in the UK. And at the moment, because we've had so much success with our brand, we've got designers offering us free dresses just to be on some rail space in the shop. Um, which we all know doesn't really happen for those bridal shops that are in the room. They don't give you free dresses for nothing. Um, and as I said already, we flex the brand into ES Boudoir Photography and the business coaching that I do. Um, I keep that quite small. I only work with about three companies a year. Um, and I work with startup companies and some companies that have been running a while just need a bit of a refresh. 
But in achieving all of that in the last seven years, I've now got a brand that has a very high commercial goodwill value. In other words, if I chose to sell that brand, I would make um, a nice little packet of money. So the brand itself is what's worth the money, and it's not for sale. Um, so Ellie Sanderson is my brand, and yes, I do talk about Ellie Sanderson in the third um, person. Um, I am actually not Ellie Sanderson. I'm not an imposter doing this presentation, but my name is not actually Ellie. Um, my company is named after my mother, um, and so that enables me to separate my brand from me as a person. So I have a whole other life as Elaine Sanderson, and then there's Ellie Sanderson, which is this brand that I own. And I think that's really important for you to think about your brand as as a person and something that you own. I work for Ellie Sanderson. So why, why do we need branding? Do we need to get emotional about it? Um, isn't it just sticking a logo on your website and making sure your carrier bags and everything all match? Um, it's a lot more than that. It's, as I said already, it's my greatest commercial asset. And it's my company identity, what's make, what makes me different from any of my competitors. Um, my brand is my personality. Everything that I put into it, I, you know, I, I stamp my personality all over it. Um, and everything that we do is utterly steeped in our branding, through from um, marketing, online, offline, etc. And that's just a little thing I thought was quite interesting to read about branding. Without, without branding, you just basically blend into everybody else. Um, you know, if you think about your website, your web presence, which is probably your most powerful thing, what does your website look like? How powerful is it? Is it memorable? Or does it just blend into the myriad of, of wedding dress websites or photographers' websites? What makes yours special and stand out? Um, and, you know, market, branding is the marketing practice of creating a name, um, a symbol or design that identifies and differentiates your company. So if your company is just blending in, there's something quite significant wrong. You need to rethink what you're doing with your branding. Um, I want to talk about a case study of a company um, who are no longer in business, but um, it's an amazing company. I'll cut you. Some of you in the room will know who this company is. It's an amaz it was an amazing wedding dress business. Um, and it was 25 years old when it had to close its doors, this business. And it's a perfect example of where the branding, the product, and everything that can go wrong with a brand did go wrong with a brand. Um, their product that they were selling didn't match their brand. In other words, the product was really, it's quite an exclusive product. Um, they were selling product, luxury products like Suzanne Neville, three and a half thousand pound wedding dresses, and it didn't match the brand logo that they had. And I'm sure you've been, in fact, we stayed in a hotel last night, and I said, this branding doesn't work. It was very glitzy downstairs. I thought, this is dead cool and modern. We got upstairs, and it was like, Ugh. what happened here? They ran out of money. So your branding has to go the whole way through. But this, this particular bridal shop had sexy product that didn't match its cheap, cheap looking branding. Um, its staff did match its branding because it chose to employ staff from Eastern Europe and they were all paid minimum wage and some of them couldn't speak English and they were trying to sell £4,000 wedding dresses and it, it didn't, again, their, their, their staff matched their brand but it didn't match their product. Um, their website didn't match their product. So again, if you came at them from a website perspective and looked at their site, their site didn't then go on to match what they were doing in stores. And you've probably been there, you've looked on a business website, you've gone into the store and you've thought, that's not quite what I'd hoped it was going to be. Um, even their company name no longer fitted the market that we're in. If you think of, you know, think of wedding dress shops these days, most of them are called boutiques or ateliers, and small is the new big. So they'd lost sight of that and their company name didn't fit. Um, and there, as I said, their branding was completely dated. Um, and it was a Marlowe wedding centre, which I know Anna at the back of the room will remember. Um, Anna and I set our businesses up about the same sort of time. Um, and Marlowe wedding centre was my biggest competitor. These guys took one and a half million a year in one shop. Um, the fact that they were called wedding centre um, conjures up all sorts, um, but they traded for 25 years, 25 years. They had some of the best, best labels in Britain in that shop on exclusivity. So they started off with great success and then they just allowed the whole thing to degenerate to a point where people wouldn't go in there because the staff weren't right, the branding didn't match, but they loved the product. And it was a big jumble of where a brand had started off brilliantly and then gone terribly wrong. 
And I guess the big thing for me is if you think of your company now and you think of what it's going to look like in 25 years, how are you going to present yourself? And that just shows you that your brand has to keep moving and growing. I've had, I think I'm on my fourth website in seven years now, and I keep changing how it looks. Not, the, not necessarily my logo, but the actual website. And they say that a website lasts two and a half years before it has to look different because customer shopping patterns change, what people expect from the experience online changes as well. And so your brand has to move on with that. Um, so, so Marley Wedding, so there's the screenshot. There it is, right there. Look at the web, look at that at the top. Um, that was taken a year and a half ago, in all fairness to them. But that was Marlow Wedding Center. That's a screenshot of the website. Look at the words. How many words can you cram on a page? This was two years ago, three years ago, when they probably set this website up, when we were obsessed with words for search engine optimization. Um, and that's what you get. Now, if I was a bride, would I go there or would I go there? I think it, it speaks volumes in terms of what it looks like. People... People buy image, they buy the brand. The reality is, those guys had better dresses than me when I opened. They had the collection that I wanted. They had Suzanne Neville, and I would have killed them for Suzanne Neville. Um, and then gradually they lost that brand because they didn't move their business forward with it. And so they lost the brand, and I got Suzanne Neville, um, which is, it, uh, those in the girls in the room will understand that that's a big ticket to have. So back to branding, why is it important that your website looks right and everything matches up, you know, who you are, how you present yourself, online. <coughs> I know where I'd go to shop. And then, you know, for, for me, just another little bit of, um, a little bit of my website there. We set this website up to be the first website in the UK to have live video footage on it. And it's back to being unique in your marketplace with your branding. Um, I was shopping one night on ASOS and I thought, how come I can see a 20 quid jumper up and down a runway and I can't see a four grand dress up and down a runway? That doesn't stack up. So we haven't got video to show you it, but we've, we've got live video footage on most of our collection, which has been no mean feat. But, um, you know, you see the dress, you like it, you click the button, you see it move. More and more people need video interactivity. So going back to that, they don't want words anymore. It's all about the visuality of how you present yourself. So um, where do you begin? So that's kind of where I've ended up. So how did I, how did I get to that point? And was it conscious? And, and yes, it was. I actually sat down and said, right, how am I going to, what's my business going to look like? You know, you have to know what your business plan is. If you haven't got a business plan, you should have a business plan. Um, I, want, you know, I wanted to know how much money I was going to take each year. Um, I wanted to know what my product proposition was going to be. You know, what am I going to sell? What can I sell? Because obviously bridal shops are tied up with, um, with exclusivity. But what can I sell? And where are my target labels? Um, and I knew, so I knew that. And then I thought, who is my target market? So I didn't want to sell 500 pound wedding dresses. That, that's not my target market. It's not what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to sell luxury products. Um, I wanted to serve girls that had a two to 3,000 pound budget. Um, and I wanted to sell X number of dresses per year to make that work. So I, I set the plan. Once I had the plan, and only once I had the plan, could I then start to think about what my brand would look like? Because you can't put packaging on something if you don't know what it is, you're packaging up. So you know, it's back to this, how do you wrap, wrap it up? So um, I sat down with a web designer, and I said, this is the product I want to sell. This is the price point. This is my target audience. Um, this is the area I'm going to get my shop in. Um, and again, the area that I had my shop in had to match the product, had to match the client base. I couldn't sell 3,000 pound wedding dresses in a terrible council estate on the back end of High Wycombe. It just doesn't meet and match my brand. So I had to get the right premises in an affluent location. Um, and once I'd done that, I started to say, right, I know what my product is, I know who I'm targeting, what is my brand going to look like? Um, and how am I going to define my brand? So I came up with, um, I, should be, I should say, if anybody wants these slides at the end, come and give me a business card. I can see people scribbling notes. So if you want them, please, please let me have your card. Um, so I then sat down, and I've said it already, my brand is a person. 
and, and you have to think of your brand as a, a thing, a thing that you own, whether you call it a person, whether it's a thing, it's there, it's independent. Um, and I have, you have to establish what is your brand purpose, what is the purpose of this thing, this brand that you, you have, what, what is it going to do? Um, what is your brand image? What is, how are you going to present your image to your customers? What is your brand behavior? That's a great one. Um, because a lot of people think about the image and the purpose, but they don't actually think about what, what is brand behavior. And I'm going to come on to all these in a bit more detail. Brand language, tone of voice, um, brand standards, how you present yourself, and brand communication. Um, and we've got a brand tagline, which is actually quite funny because my girls throw this tagline in my face and say that wasn't very whatever. Um, so when you've got a tagline, everything kind of falls off that and it just reinforces your, your brand and what you're about. So brand purpose, that's my brand purpose. Um, I tweak this um, as it changes and, and brands do change. Um, my brand purpose is to create an inspirational luxury brand that appeals to high earners. Um, that's not being elitist, that's just what I want to do. Um, I want to sell only the finest British-made designer wedding dresses. That's my purpose. I want to create outstanding customer service experience to everybody that comes in my shop, phones us up, or visits the website. Um, and I want to totally engage and support our clients from the beginning through to putting their car, their dress in their car as they drive off for their wedding. That was my brand purpose. That's clear. The only thing I've had to tweak on there is British-made designer wedding dresses because there's no margin in it. Um, but that's, that's my brand, brand purpose, and I've been true to that for seven years and everything that we, we do. Um, you know, we, we build systems around you know, the bottom one. How do we engage and support our clients? I've got uh, service-level agreements with my girls. If somebody sends us an email, they have to reply to an email within an hour. Um, and if they don't, then we've, we've failed. And if the phone rings more than three times and we're in the shop and we haven't answered it, again, that's seen as not a good way to serve. So I have all these little things, you know, jotted around the shop in the staff room that just remind people of how our brand, what our brand purpose is and how we should, how we should operate. And yes, I'm a control freak. <laughs> it's worth adding that in at this point, but so are all my staff. And then brand image, I mean, that's a, that's, uh, this is a great one. So establishing your brand colour, that took me six months. Um, whilst I was setting the business up, I wasn't just sitting there for six months. So establishing the femininity of my logo, because it, it's, it's women, I'm appealing to women, I'm not discounting men, I've had the odd one, but I'm appealing to women generally to come and buy from my brand. Um, image is about how my team present themselves, how they look. Um, I've got quite a strong view on the fact that my girls wear a uniform to work. It doesn't cost me a lot, but they wear uniforms to work. Um, I don't want my brides coming in the shop and one girl wearing a red dress and the other girl wearing a blue dress and the other girl wearing a grey dress. They all wear a black shift dress, that's it. No, no conversation, they all wear black rainbow shoes dyed, job done. And they all look smart and they all fit the brand image that we have. And they're identifiable in the shop. You know, when you've got a shop full of girls, you, you know who a member of staff is because they're, de they're dressed differently. Um, so, well-presented team. The other thing is also um, my shop presentation. It has to match, back to the Marlowe Wedding Centre example, my brand picture that you saw on my website you know, matches my carrier bags, matches all my literature, matches the colours that we use in the shop, the wallpaper design that we have in the shop. And I'm sure you're all doing this, but there might be the one little bit of that jigsaw puzzle that's missing. Uh, just make sure the whole thing is fluid the whole way through because there should be no surprises. They should open the doors and go, this is how it looked on the website. And they should step in and they should smell the scented candles. This is how I thought it would smell. This is how I thought it would look. This is how I thought people would behave. You know, the whole thing has to go the whole way through. And if it doesn't, it has to be changed. Um, and then the other thing is consistency of marketing. Um, you know, you have to make sure that everything you're doing with your marketing, whether it's online or offline in magazines, has to be exactly the same. Um, you know, we're quite emotional about marketing. We won't take a half page or a quarter paid ad. And I know that's easy for me to say because I've probably got slightly bigger budgets to spend. But if we can't do a whole page, we don't do it. 
um, because I don't want a little tiddly advert. So we're either in it or we're not. And I'd rather save my budget up to go, bang, there it is. Think of Yellow Pages when we used to use Yellow Pages. You used to flick through and you needed a taxi firm, yeah? Flick through, flick through and you pick the biggest advert. You don't pick the little one with a tiny line because you think, oh, they haven't got any money to spend, they're rubbish. So it's the same sort of thing with your branding. And I would say, rather than do lots of little bits, save your money up, target where you want to be, target where your customer is going to be, and do one big, powerful um, statement ad. Back to brand colouring, which is a really emotional one for me. I love it. Um, brand colouring. Colours induce all sorts of thoughts in our minds. So it's important to think about your brand and the colour that you've chosen for your brand. Yellow doesn't show up very well on there. Um, but, you know, every colour is part of the emotional journey that people go on with branding. Some of this we don't even think about. Why is this gone all hollow? I didn't even move, did I? That's okay. Don't move, Sanderson. Um, so so colours. Blue, intellectual, trust, serenity. You can see, see what it's got up here. Pink, feminine, tranquil. Um, and if you think of the mar if you think of some of the brands out on the high street, think of pink brands in the high street. Oh, and the word on there is sexu sexual. Think of Ann Summers, pink. Asian Provocateur, pink. You know, you think of how they all use their colours. Um, grey is neutral, depressive, lack of energy. That doesn't mean so there's anything wrong with having grey branding because your product might warrant that. It might be quite a male pro product and therefore that's great. Black can be oppressive and cold, but it can also be very glamorous if you add red to it. So it's really important to think about the colour that you choose. Um, I, I ended up going bluey green because I couldn't quite decide between the two. And I've tweaked my colour over the years as well as, I've, as, as I suppose things are more, as, as we get more modern. My, my type, my font and colour was quite blue when I started and now it's more bluey green. I've sort of moved it on a level. But you have to think about those colours. Even if you think about, think about food retailers and the colours that they use. They're all quite citric coloured. Sainsbury's is orange, John Lewis is lime green, Waitrose is lime green. So all the colours that you see around you are actually doing a job. It's a psychological warfare. They're trying to grab you in based on colours. And I don't know too many wedding dress shops that are red. It doesn't sound right or feel right. Or a lot went black and white for a while because that was trendy. But think of the so colours that colours you're using. Colours are and how you present. quite a significant part of what you do with your branding. And as I was saying before, we were really interrupted. Have a look at your website online. Make sure it stands out. Is it different? Go back to the Marlowe Wedding Centre thing. Would you be drawn into a white website with a pink logo? Would you be drawn into pictures and seduced by colour? You've, you know, you've got to get that whole emotional thing going on with your brand to buy people in. Um, certain colours just don't work well. I mean, I, I'm going to contradict myself and say white creams, very pale colours just don't jump out and grab you and then the white company's got an amazing brand but you know that's a, an exception to the rule but think about your brand colour and how it looks how it looks online. Brand behaviour, love this one. Um, I, I sell really expensive wedding dresses, I mean we sell dresses up to £5,000 now. I'm sure you can imagine the client base I have because of that. Um, they're very special lovely girls and because of that, they come into the shop and I suppose their perception of my website and what they read and see, they'll come in and they'll think we're going to be all really formal and we're not. We're actually a fun bunch of girls across a spectrum of age groups um, and we're very informal and unstuffy. So that's my brand behaviour, which kind of is a bit of a, not what they would expect. So we do everything we can to be in, informal and unstuffy. Um, as I said, we're positive and fun, even you know, down to answering the phone and how we respond to people, how we congratulate people. I do a lot of NLP training, neuro-linguistic programming um, training with my staff on, on how to speak to people, how to present themselves, the use of their body language, open arms rather than folded arms, you know, all that sort of stuff all adds up towards your brand behaviour and how your girls present themselves. Um, you know, a customer walks into your shop and a member of staff is sat at the desk, I would expect her to jump up and get round to the door and welcome these people and be very positive and open. And I'm sure you do that, but it's surprising sometimes your girls might not always be doing it. So you need to set out a very clear picture of what your brand behaviour is. 
brand language, um, tone of voice, um, again, that has to match your brand, what sort of brand language you're going to use. Um, I use normal speak, we call it Ellie speak, um, and I, I write as I, I, I speak and write the same. I write and system writing the content on my website because it has to be the language that I use. And I don't want, I mean, I look at websites sometimes and they're all terribly formal and, you know, if one would like to apply for an appointment, blah, 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 no. We'd like you to book an appointment because we need to know you're coming. So you should think about your brand language. It's got to be real. And normal per people have to connect with it because how many times have you landed on a site and thought, oh, no, out of there, I don't like that. It's a bit formal. And yet, again, that's not what my brand is, it's informal, so the brand language has to be right. It has to be modern, normal speak. I get a bit carried away and overexcited and things, and the language that I use, I use far too many adjectives. And I said to my girls, I'm going to do this presentation, write down all my top ten adjectives, and there they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's utterly exquisite, it's gorgeous. But my, I hear my staff using the same language, because it's kind of what we do. You know, we, we are positive and we're excitable, and it's quite scary when they come up with a list that I actually think, Jesus, that sounds a bit fake. But it's not fake because it's said in real language and, and real tone and how we do it. Brand language is important in everything, from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, your website, oh God, Pinterest, everything that you do has to feel the same. You don't want them to go on your website and get this feeling of, oh, they're a really great company, and then go on your Facebook page, it's all stuffy and formal. It's, it doesn't match. It has back to Marlowe, it has to match. Everything has to match the whole way through. Even your branding on your Facebook, your uh, website, your Instagram, everything, it should all be the same. And if it's not, you need to go back and quick to change, but it should be the same. They need to know they've landed on the right page. They need to see your company logo or your face and know they've landed where they thought they were going to be. So it's all about the consistency. Same with your blog, the way you write your blog. I mean, I, I don't manage to write all my blog posts. I've got a wonderful girl that writes them for me. But, you know, she's, she's got the early speak, and she writes them, and I read them before I post them, and I think they're great. She turns into me, it's brilliant. I don't have to do this anymore. Um, establishing your brand language. Brand communication. Um, you know, that's how you present yourself to your customers, online, offline, in magazines. Very much similar to your, your brand language. Use of all your social media channels. Um, and active blogs, I mean, you know about active blogs and you need to have those. Um, we've got 8,500 Twitter followers. I don't know why that happened or how, because I don't say anything that's that interesting on there. But, you know, a blog post linked to the, your Twitter, linked through to your Facebook, consistent messages the whole way through. It's almost self fulfilling in the end, but people just keep following it. But again, it has to be all completely stamped with, with your brand. Um, we've got a customer relation management system as well, which when a girl buys a dress from us, sometimes before she's even got home, she'll have a message from us congratulating her on the choice. And then a week later, she gets another email from us saying, we'd love to see you again. Um, would you like to come for a styling appointment? You know, so it's all of these processes that are put in place that again, for me, fit what my brand is. People see it as something special, therefore we have to make sure that what we're giving them is something more than they would have had if they bought it from somebody else. You have to do that. Can you hear me at the back? Okay, just checking you won't fall asleep up there. Um, brand standards, again, we've all sort of touched on this. Shop presentation, staff presentation, product presentation, I think that speaks to yourself. You know, you've set this great brand up, you know how you're going to behave, you know who your customers are, you've got to make sure you carry that through when they come into the shop. And then just a bit of a summary of, of what we've talked through there. Um, your brand has to have a purpose. You have to know what your brand purpose is. My brand purpose is to sell luxury wedding dresses. It doesn't have to be fancy, you just have to know what your purpose is. And when you find yourself getting distracted with bridesmaid dresses or groomswear, or whatever comes down the line, you think, oh, that would be the next big thing. Just remind yourself, my brand purpose is this. If you're going to deviate from that, have a really good reason. Now, I went into boudoir photography with David. We had a really good reason for that, and we really used our brand to flex into that. So think about your brand purpose. Even if you just put it in your notebook and you can see it every day, it's there. 
create your brand image. Go and have a look at your brand image. Does it say to your customers what it is that you do? If you didn't know who this brand was, go onto your website and say, does that do? And does that say to my customers what we are? So when they look at that website and they come into my shop, will they know they've landed in the same place? Brand behavior, you know, that's, we've already talked about that. Decide on your brand language, get your own set of adjectives, make sure that all your staff talk the same language. Check the wording on your website, whether it's formal, informal. You might want it to be formal, you might, want to, you might have a formal business. It might be a serious business, and therefore it has to be formal, and therefore your colors have to reflect that. But have a little look um, at, at that. Um, brand standards, we review these all the time. Sometimes I go into the shop and I stand there and go, no, we've got to change something, something's not right. You know, we put the Valentine's windows in last week, and I thought, no. No, and we used that strap line, and we went, no, it's not, is it? It doesn't fit. Change, let's change it. So just sense check it all yourself. But if you've got, so if you haven't got anything to sense check it against, what are you, what are you doing? What are you checking it against? Um, create your own brand standards, and then you know, know, know how you're going to communicate with your brand. Um, and then the brand tagline, which I've kind of alluded to. And it's not that sexy, my brand tagline. We started off Coco Chanel, I'm not proud. <laughs> um, but we, we have a brand tagline that is, if it's not classy and fabulous, it's not us. And that Coco Chanel said, two girl, girl, girl should be two things, classy and fabulous. And we use that. We recruit staff around that tagline. She walks in and my manager will go, she's not classy. We're out. <laughs> out. Um, or, you know, when we get girls on the phone, we inter for, for interviews, we pre-screen them, we pop the phone and go, no, 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 she didn't sound very fabulous. Um, and so we, we, we do it with everything. Or we, David comes to me and goes, here's your next advert, and I'll go, no, it's not really classy or fabulous. So it's a joke. And when I'm inappropriate at work, and maybe slip out the old sweary word, my girls will say, Ellie, that's not very classy and fabulous. Um, so it's, it's quite funny. But we have got this stamped on the walls in all three shops. And it's just a reminder. My customers come in and go, oh, well, that's great. But it's a reminder to my girls, a subliminal you know, brain reminder to the girls that this is, this is what we do. Um, and then just keep checking how it's going. Get the plan, agree a brand strategy, and just keep checking how it's going. I looked at my website two years ago, and it was only a year old, and my poor husband, who does my marketing, over in the corner there, I said, David, I hate it, it's gotta go. Um, and he said, what's wrong with it? And I said, I hate it, there's too many words, um, and, and David's a photographer, and I looked at all these photography websites, and I was just seduced by the images. And I thought, buying a wedding dress is about pictures, surely. It's not about words, and you need words for your search. But I wanted people to land on a website and go, oh, I want to be her. If I want to be her, I have to go there. And one of the best wedding dress designers that we've got is Stephanie Allen. Her images, you guys have heard, don't you? Her images and her photography, isn't it the best? Yeah. It is the best. It beats all the others. And, they, and here's a brand, and they're going to love it. I want to be a Stephanie Allen bride. They come in, put it on, and buy a Suzanne Neville. So it doesn't, for me, it didn't follow through the brand because the product wasn't as fabulous as the photography. Um, but her brand images leave everybody for dead because she's very creative. And that's what I wanted with my website. And it took a year to change that. So keep checking in on how it's going. Every, every year, every January, or in fact Christmas when we shut down, is a dangerous time because I've got two weeks to think about what's coming next and um, it's either a website or a new shop or something like that because you just got to keep moving. Um, don't lose the essence of what you are. Tweak it. I've changed my brand three times. Nobody's noticed, but I feel better because I think it's up to date. I've changed the colour. Um, that was my original brand when I opened. Um, which I liked seven years ago. I liked a bit of leaf action going on the top there, so it was nice. Had that in the windows, had it on the folders, had it on the carriers, had it everywhere. Um, colour, tone. Did you, did you design your own? No, good question, because I missed that on my slide. Um, I, because I work for TK Maxx, I worked with a very talented girl there that was a designer. And back then, for me, I wanted a woman. I wanted to work with a woman on it. Sorry guys, but I, it was a female product. I had to have somebody that was inside a female head, so I, I worked with a woman to design it. Um, my last website design was with a chap, but I think he was gay. <laughs> so he kind of got, he kind of got where I was coming from. How did you find him? I, I, I worked with her, and I, Jonathan, I, I met him on Twitter. 
I met a lot of people on Twitter. He tweeted me because I did something about working on ideas from a new website and he, bang, there he was. Um, and I met him and I'm giving you his details if you like, but he, he is a designer. So I had, to, I had a designer work on my new website and I also had somebody build the website. Because if you're a designer, the techie bit, and your techie bit, the design bit, you, they often don't go together. You end up, as I did with my previous website, something that's quite clunky and formal, and they just chuck a bit of colour on it and it doesn't work. So, yeah, it was a woman originally, but then I got Mr. Jonathan. And then I moved the brand on to that when I opened Oxford, because I thought, OK, let's define, um, we did it in colour as well, but let's define the shop by shop, Oxford, Beaconsfield, people, you know, turn up in the wrong shop, got to sort that out. Um, and then I got bored of that. And then that's the last one. I got rid of the leaves, and for me, I wanted butterflies this time. So, and less, it was less fussy. I just wanted something a little bit simple. But the one thing that's been consistent throughout has been the typeface. Um, it started off in black. Um, on the shops, it's silver. The the, the tone behind it, um, as I said, started off more bluey, and I've nudged it more to more, to more green now. So, you know, you just you just keep rolling with it um, as it goes. And then, as I've already said, upon, you know, upon everything that we do, every element of my business, I sense check it. Because if it's not classy and fabulous, we, we simply won't get involved in it, we won't, we won't do it. So that was seven years um, of, of doing all of that. And I, I, I hope you don't mind me sharing the Marlowe Wedding Centre. But I think that was a really, and I have massive respect for that business. And I was, when I opened, they terrified me because I had some great mm. labels in there. But I think if you take that one little bit there of a great business back then and, and see what happened to it, it's, it's quite sad that because they didn't keep their website up to date, they, didn't, they even ended up with black plastic carrier bags at the end of things. You know, that's just not very classy, is it? <laughs> so, um, so that's it. So I hope you got something out of that. If there's any questions, I'd love to take them now. Although Nick's standing up, which probably means I have to stop talking. Um, yeah, we have got a few minutes if anybody does have a question um, for Ellie. Have you trademarked yourself? Have I? Trademarked. I don't know, David, have we trademarked it? <laughs> have we trademarked? I think we are. I think the logo is, yeah. I think, I think we are. Caroline did that. Oh, yeah, we've got sealed envelopes and stuff, so that is, yeah. <laughs> yes, we've got those envelopes somewhere. But I, why would you? It's interesting because when you look at branding, you look at all the top people that create brands, the one thing they say is don't copy anybody else's brand, but it's, so it's not it's unique. So I think we should be looking at them. Yeah. We trademarked ourselves, created, we chose our name, searched to make sure there was no one else with it, um, it has all everything designed. Yeah. You know, so That's the way to do it. And, and come up with something unique. I mean, I, I hope there's nobody in the room with a shop called the White Closet or the White Wardrobe. <laughs> or the white room, or the white lounge, or there's so many of those. You stick that name into Google, you can't with about 50 wedding shops in Britain named white something. And, and whilst it sounds lovely, it's not unique. You know, it's, it's better, I mean, I named it, I came up with a name, because that was unique. I actually did start off with a number, of the Sassy Wedding Company in Chipping Norton. Um, that was me in the early days with my ex-business partner before we did uh, take off. Um, and I did think of the Beckinsfield Wedding Boutique, but then how do I flex that to two shops? It doesn't work, is it? Um, it's often better to be your own name as Anna is. You know, Anna's got two shops now, congratulations. Um, but, you know, Anna McDonald, unique. There is no other Anna McDonald apart from a singer. How dare she? <laughs> but, you know, it's best to be unique in all, in all that you do. Um, you say your name is Yeah. It was very funny. When when I it's yeah, when I when I opened the company was called Ellie Simonson and I remember meeting the rainbow rep, hi I'm Elaine, la, la, la. she still calls me Elaine eight years on. But it got to the point where people were coming in and assuming I was Ellie and I thought, you know, I'm tired going, I'm not Ellie on the main, so I just roll with it. Yeah, well it was what I did. Just just go with it. Yeah. It's, it is it is a funny one. Yeah. Um, I have, I mean, I have a family nickname as well, so sometimes I, I, you know, I don't know who I am. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's, you just have to roll with it. Because it's a brand, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Let them call you what they want, as long as they give you a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be whoever you want me to be. That's three brands. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you are. Uh, 
the line. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I've been asked that question before. I do, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm quite a big, vivacious character and um, I will get out there and do things. And I, you know, even doing this, I, this kind of put me out of my comfort zone this morning. I was kind of thinking, no, who's going to come in? I'm going to be in here talking to Nikki. Um, I was quite nervous about that. Why am I doing this? Um, brand profile. Um, I do Sarah Haywood workshops, brand profile. Um, I've agreed to be a wedding industry award judge, brand profile, I like doing that as well. Um, so a lot of that stuff I do for brand profile and, you know, my girls say, oh, Ellie's off doing her knobby stuff today, so that's fine. They, they call it my knobby stuff, but they understand that probably 20% of my job is marketing my brand, getting it out there, going to awards, meeting magazines, doing stuff to, to, to make the brand what it is, even if it isn't me. Stop them. <laughs> stop them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening.